Hello again, I'm Joe Walensky, Conference Director for ConveyUX, and that's Blink's annual conference uh, coming up the last week of February uh, in Seattle and also online. And this is another episode in my series where I get a chance to talk to the many speakers that will be participating uh, at ConveyUX. Uh, today, I'm pleased to be speaking with Sindhu Narasaman. Hello, Sindhu. How are you today? Hi, Joe. Doing well. How are you? Oh, everything's going well. It actually uh, looks like a fine day uh, in my home office north of Seattle, where Blink has its uh, headquarters office. Where are you talking to us from today? Well, I'm talking to you from the very nice suburbs of Issaquah, Washington, right here, and it's definitely a pretty day outside. Well, excellent. Well, uh, it's great to have you involved in the event, uh, and uh, the best place to start is if you could tell us a little bit about you, your background, and the types of things that you're involved with for work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Excited to. So thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to speak in Convey UX. I am super excited and I'm looking forward to meeting everybody uh, in person. So just to talk about a little bit about my background and how my interest in design came to be. I started to pursue the UX design uh, career basically driven by my curiosity about technology and how it affects uh, the lives of people in an everyday basis. So I have two master's degrees. One is in computer science and the other one is in human-centered design and engineering. It's basically about like understanding how computers work and then finally making them usable, accessible, and beautiful uh, to users. So uh, some of the highlights of my career include the time that I spent at Amazon. Uh, so at Amazon, I was able to really like uh, work on very, very new products like in-home and in-car delivery. And when you work on early projects, you learn that a lot of it is about interface design and about like how the interface is presented to users. But you also learn that you're really focusing on the user at that point, right? Like it's about introducing a brand new experience and seeing how people will take that and what different wrappers you can use to be able to introduce that experience to users in a way that it is not too jarring to them, but also in a sense that they will want to try it and be curious about it. So those were some very interesting learnings from the in-home and the in-car experience. So we uh, we built uh, brand new apps. We worked within the existing Amazon app and we tried different modalities uh, and finally figured out what works for our users. And uh, it was a very exciting journey to do that. Uh, after that, I worked in Amazon AI and uh, Amazon AI again in 2018 was a very, very early stage uh, project. So a lot of interesting learnings there. But uh, but yeah, it was these are some of the projects that I worked on in a very early, early stage and an early basis. Currently, I work in a startup called uh, Abracadabra Store. And the goal here is to actually introduce children to, you know, concepts that they would not be exposed to in school, like STEM, cultural education, and really give the control to children and let them be the founders or, you know, the um, the leaders of their own education, where we're giving them a specific set of curriculum and having them follow through that. Well, it sounds like uh, you've been very uh, busy and active, and your work with the startup sounds very interesting. Um, you know that the work that you're doing right now um, is there anything, uh, yeah, you know, particularly uh, challenging or an aspect of it that you're really passionate about? Yeah, um, some of the key things that come. Uh, in mind when we think about education is that, you know, you see that a lot of times kids are not really interested in some of the things or concepts that they are introduced to. And that really dilutes the whole uh, concept of education, right? Like that makes it look like children are not really interested in learning. But the truth is, when you introduce the right set of concepts and when you introduce them to very different concepts very early in their lives and give them the opportunities to be the leaders of their own journey uh, and to be able to choose topics or ideas that seem appealing to them and power that with technology, 
you will you might actually have different outcomes in education you might have children that are interested in going and picking up that book and reading it and spending hours in being immersed in it so that's kind of the whole uh, north star that i'm trying to pursue with my startup um, and we're obviously trying to uh, incorporate ai into it we want to be able to learn from the children we want to be able to introduce them to concepts progressively and those are areas where ai can help us excel uh, right now uh, in the way it stands but you know excited about how it's going to evolve in the future and make this even better for us well uh, ai is uh one of the major themes of our conference and and so you've mentioned your background there and and how it ties into your work um, your topic is entitled UX in the AI Age. Um, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about how you came around to that topic and what we could expect to learn from it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So most of the things that I want to share in the talk would be about some of the learnings that I had when I worked in Amazon AI very early. So I worked in it in 2018, which gave me a lot of perspective into this technology when it was a fledgling technology, right? Like we didn't have uh, the power of GPT-4 that exists today. And we were actually trying to package and provide an interface for people to interact with when in the back Around, it was not really true AI in any sense. So that really taught me a lot about how to think about AI systems and how to think about presenting that to users. A lot of the things that I want to be talking about in the conference is how UX is going to be impacted with the advent of AI, but also about the future of uh, what AI is going to, how, how the challenges that we're going to face as UX designers as AI evolves and how we are going to have to like think about new areas that we've not really focused on um, currently, uh, at least when we are in the world of interface design. Well, uh, it, it sounds like that's going to be a, a really interesting uh, topic to uh, uh, hear from you. Uh, you know, without getting into the details about your presentation, which we'll get at the conference, um, do you have a, a, you know, a thought you might want to share now about your experience with AI and 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 what you think it, it means in terms of uh, either our, the tech industry or UX or maybe broader uh, society? Yeah, of course. Uh, I will go into details in it in the conference, I promise. But one of the areas that I'm really passionate about uh, that I want designers and design practitioners to be thinking about is the ethics around AI. Right. Like when you think about this, uh, we really want to be thinking about how do we introduce users to a different modality that they're going to be interacting with in the, in the future. Right. Like and what I mean by that is currently when somebody picks up a call in customer service, users are used to talking to a real human. If they are going to be talking to a machine in the future with AI and AGIs, should we disclose that? And how do we disclose that in ways that are more inviting to users than off-putting, right? Like right now, a lot of a lot of people will tell you, if I know I'm talking to a machine, I don't really want to talk with it. Instead, how do we introduce that? And how do we introduce uh, these concepts of talking to a machine versus talking to a human? What's ethical? What is not ethical? There's so many questions around the sociological aspects of AI that I strongly think that designers and design practitioners should be focusing on and should be pushing the industry forward in. And this really involves us thinking outside our mainstream uh, interface design and experience design, which we're used to. So I want to urge as many practitioners to think about this early and often um, as AI is evolving so that we can hold the line and we can define this experience before it goes into the hands of people that are just focused on uh, building technology and improving it. Well, I think uh, that will uh, promote a lot of great discussion around AI when we get uh, to the conference. Uh, I, yeah, another question I wanted to ask was, you know, if you have a, you know, a tip or a thought for 
people who are relatively new to uh, the UX uh, profession. Um, we have a lot of people that are very ex uh, experienced, but we also want to uh, bring along the, the next generation of UXers. Is there anything that maybe you wish you would have known uh, earlier on that you could share with people that are just getting started today? Yeah. One of the things that uh, I, one of the badges or labels that I attached on myself when I was starting out early was I'm a junior designer. When I'm a junior designer, that means that I'm just going to be focused on craft, right? Like I'm just going to be focused on pushing pixels, making sure I'm great at Figma and making sure I understand color theory and concepts of design. Those are great. We still need and we still want you to be able to do those things. But I also want you to think of yourself as a designer and not really as a junior designer, right? And what happens when you give yourself the label that I'm a designer instead of a junior designer is you start to focus on bigger problems. You start to focus on your users. You start to focus on journeys inside, outside, and possibly on the day in life of your users. And that really promotes leadership thinking of oh, maybe we could think about this product idea and this way the product could evolve and change instead of how this particular piece of interface or, um, or UI needs to function. So my uh, tip or like, you know, uh, request from young designers would be to really think about themselves as design leaders already and start acting like it and start to think about things outside craft while also mastering their craft. I know it's a lot to ask for, but I'm pretty confident that the next generation is going to be bigger and brighter than us. So it's a good expectation to have. Well, thanks for sharing your uh, advice on that. Um, the last question I had to ask you was uh, about books. Uh, at the uh, conference, we have a conference bookstore that is sponsored by a Seattle uh, local bookshop, uh, uh, Ada's, and they bring uh, books for sale to the conference, as well as having an online bookstore. Um, is there anything that you've read recently that you might want to recommend to uh, the people listening to this video? Yeah, I think we got into it a little bit, uh, the context of this a little bit in the earlier part of the interview, right? So I'm focused on building ed tech and educational projects for young children. And that really means that understanding and how kids evolve and how they learn and how they actually develop uh, the sense of entity or identity uh, around themselves has been very important for me. So one of the books that I've read in the recent past that's really helped me understand how children become their own humans is this book called Hold On to Your Kids by Gabor Mate. And um, I definitely encourage that to be a good read for people that are curious about how kids grow up and learn or parents who are trying to deal with uh, toddlers, teenagers, uh, and different stages of kids in their lives. Well, thanks for uh, adding that uh, to our recommended list. We'll uh, see if we can get that into the conference bookstore. And uh, thanks for taking the time to share your thoughts uh, with me about uh, your background in AI and, and your topic and, and other things. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in Seattle in, in just a few months. Yeah, looking forward to it too. Thanks, Joe. All right. Thanks a lot, Sindhu. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.